Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 5 Before Podcast. This is Pastor John coming to you live. For those of you that are listening live, I do apologize. I'm going live a little early today because I had issues on Thursday getting it up and I was going to be away from the office again and I did not want to run into those issues again. Um, I wasn't able to post on Thursday and it really bothered me. So instead of trying to uh, you know, gamble and see if I could get it to work later live mobile. I was just going to go ahead and do it while I was here at the office. Um, so, man, good to see you guys today. Welcome. Uh, we already got a lot of live viewers and listeners right now. That's awesome to see you. Hey, welcome, guys. Thank you for being a part of the 5B4 today. Um, it will still go out at its normal time later uh, for those of you who are looking for it later. So it will be there, but um, I, I didn't want to miss the window today that I had to share with you because I missed it on Thursday and that has rarely happened since we've been doing the five before and it breaks my heart. So I hope you guys had an awesome weekend, man. We did. We, we celebrated some graduates and if you're out there and you're part of the class of 2020 or maybe you've got a, a student that's a part of that class, man, we honor you and we just hope that... Um, that, that, that you know that God has big plans for your future and that I know what you've been through over the last several months has been discouraging, uh, but be encouraged. God's using it as a promotion season. So um, I think that's, um, that's exciting to think about. But we're not here to talk about that today. We did that on yesterday. Uh, we're here to talk this week. Uh, we finished up with parables last week, and I didn't even get to finish with the parable I was going to finish with. I may come back to it later. Um, but uh, we're shifting gears this week and we're going into a subject matter that is one of the great equalizers in life and we're going to talk about pain. Come on, anybody know what pain is? Anybody ever been through a painful moment or a painful season? I know right now even it looks like Joey O'Dell is listening right now. Just last week he dropped a brake drum on his big toe and chopped that bad boy almost all the way off and had to have surgery to reattach it. He knows a little bit about pain right now as he is sitting there listening with his leg pop propped up. So, um, And I'm not talking about physical pain like that. I'm not talking about the pain that we experience when we're injured or hurt, um, although that is very real as well. I'm talking about pain in life. Come on, anybody uh, been through some painful seasons, some painful moments? So I think it's going to be great this week to open up a discussion. Um, even right now in the season we're in with, with all of the um, the chaos and the frustration and everything that is happening out um, in the cities. And, and, and I, I know that you guys are aware of what's going on. We have, we have rioting and destruction um, and all of this stuff. And people are attacking the destruction. But what a lot of people fail to remember is all of this is a byproduct of one word, pain. And we need to learn how to recognize and empathize with people's pain. We need to learn how to not judge people's pain. And we need to learn how to respond appropriately to pain. And so um, I think this is super relevant right now. And I might talk a little bit more about that aspect of it later. But as for now, let me jump into the Word of God just for a few minutes today and read to you maybe the most incredible pain chapter in the Bible to me because this is written. I'm going to read to you out of Psalm 51. And for those of you who don't know the story, David sinned. And when he sinned, um, some judgment came down over him. And the consequence of his sin um, was he lost his baby. Uh, the baby ends up dying. And we read Psalm 51 as David is repenting uh, before God uh, for, from what he went through. Because I think we need to start here because I think this is where most people think... Um, I think this is the way most people think about it anyway. I'm going to show you in the rest of the week that all pain doesn't come from decisions we make. But there are moments in our life, I need you to hear me, there are moments in our life where the pain that we experience are a direct result of the consequence of the choices and the decisions that you make. Every choice that you make, it determines a destination. You have to remember that. Every choice that you make, it determines a destination. And so this is a story of a guy who made a decision and that decision brought pain. And he shows us how in the moments where we bring the pain through decisions that we make, he shows us how to respond. So let's see what he says. David says this in Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. I love that he starts this way. This is so key. You have to start the pain process. And that's the way I'm going to relate to this for the rest of the week. I'm going to call it the pain process. You have to start the pain process with the right mentality of God loves me. If you don't start there, 
then nothing else is going to matter. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to stop. I'm, I'm going to read a little bit more right now. Um, and I'm probably going to come back to Psalm 51 tomorrow because I just feel right now the Holy Spirit pressing me to leave this one thought with you. How, again, let me read it to you again. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from sin. He understands that forgiveness is real, that God really can release us um, from the sin in our lives. But he starts by acknowledging that God loves me and that God has compassion for me, that God has good for me. And even in this moment, can you imagine being David? Who knows? Now, now again, some of you may not even know this story. David has slept with a woman that is not his wife. He has gotten her pregnant. He has murdered her husband. And after all of that, David still has a mentality that says, according to your love, I know that you love me. You have unfailing love towards me. And the first part of the pain process that you have to take hold of is this idea of God does love me. I know there's pain, but he has unfailing love and compassion to put towards me. I know I made some bad decisions, and I know I probably feel like a disappointment right now, and I feel like I'm such a failure, but God still has unfailing love that he wants to point towards my life. So I just start right now today with this pain process subject. And again, we try to keep these short. So instead of continuing on, I'm going to continue this chapter tomorrow. I'm going to shift up some things because I want you to get this. This is so key that you understand that in your pain that God has unfailing love to, to, uh, to shine towards you right now. And you need to take that and understand that because forgiveness is not going to come if you don't know that he loves you. Restoration is not going to come if you don't know that he loves you because all of these things are a byproduct of the fact that he loves us. Um, what if everything we went through, I said this yesterday, what if everything we went through went through this filter in our mind, in our life that said, God has unfailing love towards me? What, how would we respond really? How would we live our life really if we really had a filter in our life that no matter what we go through, God says, I have unfailing love towards you. It would change the way we thought. It would change the way that we talk. It would change the way that we walk. So come on, let's, let's, let's take a moment right now and let's just, let's just acknowledge the fact that even in the pain, even though it may even be my fault, he still loves me. That's how to, get at, that's how to deal with the pain process the right way. So let me pray for you this morning. Father, we love you and we thank you today that you love us. I'm thankful today that there is somebody out there right now that is listening that needed to hear this. God, they're in a painful moment, a painful season, and it may even be because of a decision that they made. And they feel on top of the pain of the decision, they also feel like a failure that just amplifies the pain. They feel like they have done nothing but made mistakes that just amplifies the pain. So right now in Jesus' name, I pray that they are gripped, that they are overcome with this idea of not pain, not I'm a disappointment, but God has unfailing love and compassion towards my life. And because of that, there is forgiveness. Because of that, there is restoration. Because of that, I can be made whole even in my painful season. So I pray in Jesus' name that you would impart that knowledge, that you would impart that wisdom, that you would impart that revelation, that you would renew our minds today to know that you have unfailing love. That means, why, why would he describe it as unfailing? Why do you want us to know, Father, that it is unfailing? Because it reminds us that even when we feel like we have made mistakes, your love never fails. It never gives up, as the song says. So we thank you for that today, and I pray that you would just give them life today through this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, man. Love you guys. Thank you so much for letting me be with you. Don't miss tomorrow. We're going to continue in Psalm 51 to, to talk about how do we deal with the pain process. Come on. Love you guys. Have an awesome day.